Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate test. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to another live edition of Ask Huda. All praises due to Allah alone. We praise Him and we seek His help. Whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one. And whomsoever Allah leads us say none can show Him guidance. May the peace and salutations be upon Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. So my dear viewers, allow me to remind you with our phone numbers in the beginning. Area code 002, then 023855131. Alternatively, area code 002, then 01005469323. And the WhatsApp numbers for calls only. Unfortunately, we cannot entertain your messages. Area code 0013478060025. And finally, area code 0013614891503. You can also watch us live on my page, the Facebook page, and the YouTube channel. Nassim from Nashim from the Philippines. Assalamu alaikum, our caller today. Nashim. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, Nashim. How are you, Sheikh? I'm doing fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. And you? I have one question, Sheikh. Go ahead, Ian Nashim. I'm listening. I, I, I have one question, Sheikh. Okay. Is it permissible to pray with mask, face mask, face mask? Okay, got your question. Thank you, Nashim from the Philippines. Assalamu alaikum. Tas, Tasneem from Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum, Tasneem. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Tasneem, how are you? I have a question. Yes, please go ahead. Is it permissible to go to non-Muslim non country as a tourist? Okay. Uh, like I'm in Bangladesh, I want to go to visit somewhere in India, which has also Muslim states. What is the ruling on in general non-Muslim country and country like have uh, Muslim states. Okay, got your question. Tasneem from Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum. Abdullah from Canada. Assalamu alaikum, brother Abdullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. I just have one question. Uh, is it permissible to have a credit card contract? And if so, can the uh, children uh, can the children of a father use his credit card? All right. That's all. Got your question, Abdullah from Canada. All right. Nashim from the Philippines asked about praying while wearing mask. Generally speaking, it's not permissible to cover the face if you're doing that unnecessarily. But if this is due to the fear of the contagious diseases such as the pandemic COVID-19, then it's definitely permissible. Likewise in Ihram. In Ihram, it's not permissible to cover the face. And uh, for women, if they pass by men, cover your face. If they're seen by non-mahram while in Ihram, cover their face. And also for men, in case that there is a pandemic like what we're having right now, or somebody is having flu and he doesn't want to infect others, it becomes permissible and there is no ransom, no kafara. So it is okay to pray while wearing the mask, uh, Nashim, especially if you pray in the masjid in congregation. Tasneem from Bangladesh, traveling to non-Muslim countries for tourism. As long as you know that you will not be going to places where you know that most definitely you will be involved in haram, of watching or doing or eating or drinking, then it is permissible. It is permissible to travel the world, to see uh, the creation of Allah, the wonders that uh, people have made, and to visit tourist attractions and all of that. So the condition is feel insecure again is the fitna, which I mentioned earlier. And I think I've mentioned before a few examples. Somebody is taking his case to Niagara Falls, permissible. Well, I'm taking my kids to Disneyland and we're not doing any uh, prohibition. It's permissible. Assalamu alaikum. Muhammad from the Philippines. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. 
Alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Wada. Hi, Sheikh. I'm doing fine, alhamdulillah. Do you have questions, Muhammad, today? Yes, I have three questions, Sheikh. Yes, please go ahead. My first question, Sheikh, is Sheikh, what is the takfir in, what is really on giving a takfir on an, individ, on an individual? Okay. And my second question, Sheikh, is Sheikh, are my first cousins mahram to me? Okay. And my last question, Sheikh, is, Sheikh, is it possible to say that I do not like this food or I do not like this particular food? Is one sinful if he, he or she says this? I didn't get your third question, Muhammad. Can you uh, uh, explain it a little further? Uh, my last, my third question, Sheikh, is, Sheikh, is it permissible to say that I do not like this food or I do not like this particular okay. food? Is one sinful if he or she says this? All right. Got your questions, Muhammad from the Philippines. Thank you. Uh, Abdul Karim from Switzerland. Assalamu alaikum, Abdul Karim. Yeah. Go ahead, Abdul Karim. Yeah. You're live on Ask Oda. What is your question? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Shaykh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my brother. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Sheikh, I have a question, and I want please a detailed answer. Uh, here in the Switzerland, we know that uh, uh, chicken and beef and everything from Ahlul Qatar is uh, permissible to eat. But uh, the beef, uh, I mean the uh, the sheep and the cow, we Abdul Karim, can you hear me? Is it permissible no, I, to I, eat I, from I that meat? You, I lost you for a few seconds. So you said, what about the beef and the sheep? Then you, uh, we lost you. Uh, uh, no, I, I wanted to tell you that here in Switzerland, uh, they have cow uh, and sheep they are cutting is the, I, we don't know how they are killed got your question abdul karim it's not any different than uh, the states or across europe before i take the next caller i want to tell this name that also i answered a similar question before where i said that priority is to travel to those countries where you know that you'll be safe not only as far as security against harms and robberies and, and Islamophobes, but also safe when it comes to halal and haram. So there are beautiful islands all over Malaysia, Indonesia, for instance, Langkawi in Malaysia. Amazing, amazing nature. So if you have the fund and you have an access to travel, travel to those countries. I don't want to be specific. I do not actually, uh, I'm, I, I don't want to say I'm promoting a particular country, but I would love to do that. Like, you know, Turkey is a beautiful country. Malaysia is an amazing country. Uh, it has beautiful nature and has a lot of tourist attractions. So visit these countries. Assalamu alaikum. Ridwan from United Arab Emirates. Welcome to Ask Huda. Ridwan, how are you? I'm good, Sheikh. How are you? I'm doing wonderful, alhamdulillah. Uh, Thank you for long asking. Long time since I spoke to you. I love you for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. May the one whom you love me for his sake love you as well. Ameen. May he gather us, Ameen. both and all the viewers, under the shade of a throne on the Day of Judgment. Allah, Ameen. Thank you, Sheikh. I had one of the best Ramadan in this year. Even though we had this quarantine and lockdown, Subhanallah, thanks to you a lot. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. We enjoyed your videos which you used to make uh, in, during the Hajj time in, on the roof of your house. You gave us company. <laughs> MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, may Allah Azza wa Jal. Bless you for that abundantly. Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. Even though it was enjoyable, but just today I was thinking about Ramadan is approaching and I love to be in the haram sitting in front of the Kaaba during uh, Taraweeh and Tahajjud. May Allah make it easy for all of us. Ameen. So, Ridwan, do you have any questions today? 
Sheikh, yes, I have uh, one question. Yes. I have, uh, uh, I just wanted to ask you, whenever, before we do any kind of uh, good deed, like sadaqah or something, uh, do we have to say something, Ya Allah taqabbal minni, or something like that? Because I have a constant uh, thought in my mind that uh, maybe Allah maybe he accepted it from me, maybe he did not. Uh, I have some thoughts like that. So I don't know if this is what's what. Or All right. I did, uh, okay. Right. Got your question. Ridwan from United Arab Emirates. Thank you. Muhammad from India. Assalamu alaikum, brother Muhammad, and welcome to Ask Wida. Walaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, akhi, I'm doing wonderful. How are you? I'm fine, Sheikh. Thank you for asking. Okay, what is your question today? Yes, Sheikh. A uh, few days back, I was too sick and uh, I wanted to make salah. And uh, the doctor told me not to come in contact with uh, any water. So I had to make tayammu. Okay. And then uh, I, and then I couldn't find any mud near my nearby my house. And then I asked my parents. They told me to make uh, I am in the wall. Is this permissible? I just want to know the shape. Yeah, but uh, Muhammad, first of all, Alhamdulillah, I'm glad you recovered. Shafak Allah Afak. May Allah grant you a full and a quick recovery. Secondly, we don't do tayammum with mud whatsoever. We do tayammum with dust or sand or the turab. So if a dusty surface, if the wall is dusty, it's sufficient. If not, a handful of sand that they bring to you, I'm sure India has plenty of sand, okay? So a handful of sand in a plate, and you strike once, you clean up your hand, and you strike and you, uh, and you wipe over your face. That's it. That is tayammum. Okay? Barakallahu feek. Uh, Muhammad from Indian. May Allah give you a quick shifa. Rahman from uh, UK. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, I have a question to you. Sure. Okay, in UK, basically, if we drive the car, we have to uh, pay for the insurance. And the car insurance, uh, we get offer from the company monthly and the yearly. Like, if we pay one go, we can pay the amount like exactly yeah rahman assalamu alaikum are you still on the line i assume you are okay well i guess you're asking about the car insurance and the payment and the deferred amount which may be accompanied with interest samir from kashmir Assalamu alaikum, Samir. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Samir, welcome to Ask Uda. Go ahead. Sheikh, I am from Kashmir. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Okay, go ahead, I'm listening. Uh, Sheikh, I had read a hadith of Beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in which he advised his companions to use Indian aloes wood. Samir. You're talking about al qust al Hindi, correct? The herb. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. okay, what about it? I, I, I want to know, what, Sheikh, I want to know what is it and how to make use of it. All right, inshallah. Okay, that's a medicinal plant, and uh, I hope, inshallah, we can fetch uh, uh, an image to that plant. Sometimes it is grounded, and you can sniff it like powder, and it is very good for uh, sinusitis. It's good for migraine and headache, and um, inshallah, uh, if we can find an image to it, we will uh, display it. Samir from Kashmir, thank you so much. Uh, Mustafa from the UK. Assalamu alaikum, Mustafa. Okay, try again, Mustafa. Uh, 
Assalamu alaikum. Um, Abdullah from Canada. His question about uh, signing up or applying for a credit card and having a credit card. The contract of the credit card is a facet contract. It's corrupt because it entails a condition which is haram. The condition is that if you're late on making the payment, you will end up paying interest. And this is the pure riba, riba nasa. You pay extra. And the fiqh rule that kullu qardin jarra naf'an fahuwa riba. Whenever you take a loan and you have to pay extra at the time of the payment, this is absolutely pure usury. So it is forbidden. But due to the necessity that every person, not only living in the West, but even living in Muslim countries, to rent a car, to make the payment, to do advertisement for da'wah on the uh, social media, I need a card. To pay for bills, you need a card. The ATM card is insufficient in many countries. If your ATM card is sufficient, then do not use credit card. But if it is not, then it is permissible to obtain a credit card provided you link it with your current account. So what I do myself is direct withdrawal whenever the payment is made. You don't have to wait for the due date of the payment. When I make a charge, I have enough balance in my current account. So go ahead and take it from my current account. I signed up with them this way. But the condition is facid, is corrupt. And I'm only waiving this condition because of the necessity. If you don't need it, do not use it. And if it is okay for you, for you to use, then it is okay to hand it over to your children to use as well. Ali from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Ali. Wa alaikum assalam Hayakallah. Hayakallah. My question is, uh, is, is it better for me to slaughter a sheep on my own or to give it to someone? Is the reward the same or is it better for me to slaughter it myself? Okay. And the second question is, uh, I, I have a, a, this, a share. actually I saw it on the Facebook that if you reach 60 years, Allah will stop about seeing your sins. Is this as is on authentic? And Ashek, please, uh, I need some more explanation on the Hadith. Okay, that's a very interesting hadith, and uh, I'd like to begin with it. Allahu ila rajulin balaga sitin. So when a man reaches the age of 60, Allah has already given him enough excuses and benefits of doubt, irrespective of the sins pertaining to the sexual desires and the prohibition irrespective of earning. Because when a person reaches the age of 60, may Allah grant every person who is at the age of 60 or 70 a long life and a great health. But obviously the curve doesn't keep going up forever. Rather the Quran says, It starts declining. 60 man, maybe at any time you're ready to go. So when a person is at the age of 16 still drinking, or not offering the prayers or looking at what Allah has forbidden, watching bad stuff, you run out of excuses. That is the meaning of Allahu ila rajulin balagha sittin. Okay? Uh, I think I answer your question. Iman from Belgium. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Um, I have three questions, inshallah. Okay, go ahead. Um, my... My first question is, um, is the maternal health uncle of my grandfather, my mahram? Um, maternal, my, again, 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 again. Maternal? Maternal health uncle okay. of my grandfather. Okay. Yeah. Um, my second question is, if it is permissible to stun an animal um, before we slaughter it or just after we've slaughtered it? And why, why, why would my, you stun it after the slaughter, Iman? I don't know, it's like... What um, is the purpose of stunning an animal or shooting an animal after it has been already sacrificed? What is the purpose? It's because, like, I don't know, but it's a... Um, in this country, since 2019, there is a ban on slaughter without stunning. Yeah, but and, the um, stunning there is normally no... happens, takes place before in order to either hypnotize the animal or calm or control the cattle. But after, there is no point. Yeah, I don't know, but it's also... it's. 
if you want to slaughter, you need to do it before or just after. It's a, it's a law in this country. Oh, okay. So, I look, don't know. <laughs> no, look at this. There is a difference between if I'm doing it myself. Okay, if I'm doing it myself, I'm not going to stun the animal. Why shall I torture the animal? We know how to slaughter the animal in a very comfortable position and it becomes halal. But if it is by law, and in the slaughterhouses they do that, if they have, uh, what do you say, like uh, they supervise this process, and if an animal is dead, then they discard it because there is a, a great possibility, a very high uh, rate of fatality if you stun the animal, especially they stun the animal in the brain, so it dies. If it dies before the slaughtering, then it's maita, we're not allowed to eat it. If you're doing it yourself and you're just doing it because it is required by the law in this case, what you said makes sense. Okay, your second question, Iman, please. And my third question is, um, oh, you, if it is permissible to bury a Muslim in a country where the graves, you know, the body remains are removed after a certain period of time. And do you have a and choice? And a period of time depends on how much you've paid. Do you have a choice? Huh? Do you have a choice of not doing so? No, you need to pay for a period of, period of time if you want to bury this person in this country, but you can also ch choose to, do, uh, to bury the person back home, but it's okay. like... Okay, now I have a question for you. What was your first question? My first question was um, if my maternal half-uncle, yeah, or, the mater or the maternal half-uncle yes. of my he's, he's your grandfather is my mahram. Yeah. Your maternal uncle your maternal uncle is your mahram, whether full or half. No, the half-uncle of my grandfather. Okay, that's of your grandfather. Okay. Yeah. And burying a Muslim in a graveyard temporarily. Okay. Thank you, Iman. We'll get to your questions, inshallah. Uh, Muhammad from the Philippines, he asked about judging an individual, a particular person, of being an infidel or a kafir. And uh, to be more specific, he's asking about judging a Muslim or a person who used to, to be a Muslim of being a kafir. Because obviously, a non-Muslim doesn't need your judgment anyway. He doesn't say I'm Muslim. We're talking about somebody whose name is Muslim, born to a Muslim family, supposed to be a Muslim, but he did some acts that lead to off. That is not the job of the layman or the ordinary people. He can talk about the acts in general of those which will take the person out of the fold of Islam. But pointing fingers to a particular person and judging him as an upstate or an infidel, and he is even pretending to be Muslim, none of your job. Even if the person doesn't pray. This is the job of the authority who would appoint a council of the scholars to refute the misconceptions for this person, to argue with him, then they will judge whether he is a Muslim or not. So an individual, you cannot judge him that he is out of the fold of Islam. Unless if you are a scholar who is aware of the entire circumstances of that person. For laymen, no. Do not be judgmental of others' faith. Assalamu alaikum. Amin from Bahrain. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ameen. Welcome to Ask Wada Akhi. Yes, Sheikh. I have uh, four sisters from my same mother and same father. And I have one brother and one sister from same father but different mother. Mm. So my question is, in my inheritance, will they get the same share as my real sisters? Uh, inheritance from whom? From, from my property whenever I die. Okay. From your property. Yes. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Got your question. Bayan from Australia. Assalamu alaikum. Bayan, your live one ask with a Bayan. You know, Australia is far away, so it takes time to communicate. Bayan, assalamu alaikum. Yeah, Bayan. The hospital. 
Okay. You, when you finish flipping the pages, inshallah, you can call me back. How is that? All right. Muhammad from the Philippines. Uh, is it permissible to say to a food that I don't like it? Listen to the attitude of our role model and the greatest example, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in this respect. What Aisha radiallahu anha described that the Prophet وسلم, if he liked the food, he would eat it. And if he doesn't like it, he would never say, I don't like it. He never criticized the food. Rather, he would not eat it. And that's it. So that should be sufficient. Why? If it is halal and somebody else likes it, and you say in front of them, I don't like it, that is disgusting. And it is offending to them. I don't want to know your reasons. You want to be vegetarian? Be my guest. You want to be whatever. You don't like to eat shrimp. You don't like to eat pass or seafood. That's your code. But don't you criticize a food which Allah has made it lawful for people to eat. Whatever is lawful is good. I didn't develop a taste for it. That's okay. No problem. Just do not eat it. But do not criticize a risk or a provision which Allah has created and provided where people or other people actually like it. It's time to take a short break and we'll be back inshallah in a couple minutes to answer your valuable questions and take some more calls. Inshallah, please stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Let me quickly remind you with our phone numbers, area code 002, then 01, I'm sorry, 001-361-489-1503, that's a WhatsApp number, and there is another WhatsApp number, area code 001-347-806-0025. We also have a couple other numbers, regular uh, numbers, area code 002, then 01005469323, and same area code, then 02385531. Um, we've received many questions, mashallah, in the first segment. I'm trying to catch up with them. So, Muhammad from the Philippines asked about the first cousin, or uh, whether he's a mahram or not, first or far or close cousin. Cousins aren't mahram. What does it mean? We, we need to perceive the term mahram as it should be first. Mahram yani a woman whom I cannot marry forever because I am mahram for her. I am haram. It is forbidden to me to marry her. So a sister, a mother, a daughter, uh, an aunt, granddaughter, grandmother, uh, wa in ala wa in safil, all right? But the cousins, no, I can marry my cousin, it's permissible. And Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was married to his cousin, Zainab bin Tijash. May Allah be pleased with her. If in your culture you think, oh, she's my cousin, she's like my sister, that's your call. You don't want to marry her. No one is asking you to marry your cousin. But is it permissible? It's permissible. So a woman whom you may marry, or the girl, a man whom you may marry at any time, is not your mahram. Accordingly, your brother-in-law is not your mahram. Why? He now is married to your sister, and that's why you cannot marry him. But God forbid, in case of death or separation, he can marry you, if you agree. And we have Uthman ibn Affan, may Allah be pleased with her, or with him. He was married to Ruqayya, may Allah be pleased with her. Ruqayya, the Prophet's daughter. And when she died, the Prophet وسلم, gave him his other daughter, Umm Kulthum, in marriage. So the brother or the sister-in-law aren't mahram. Got it? Mustafa from the UK. Assalamu alaikum, Mustafa. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Uda, Akhi. Go ahead. Okay, so taking my phone call. Uh, doctor, welcome. I have a... 
Thank you. I have a couple of questions, uh, especially uh, questions uh, from Arabs, um, well, Arab Christians that they do bring up regarding a couple of verses from the Quran. So, uh, question first one is, um, Doctor, is from Surah uh, 33, verse 56. Uh, in Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi, where they say that this means that God is praying to the Prophet. Salah, they expect to. So that's the first question. The second one is, the Sheikh, is They say, rather than saying planner, he's a deceiver. So I just want you to clarify the wordings behind it as the ignorance is obviously spreading towards other non Arabs and they're kind of spreading it around as well. Jazakallahu khair. Mustafa, the answer is in the Quran itself in another ayah. It is Allah who does salah upon you and his angels in order to take you out of darkness into light. So a salah is not Allahu Akbar. In the salah, you say, Allah Akbar, Allah is the greatest. So how would Allah offer salah to anyone else? But as salah from Allah, as salah is an ambiguous word, which means dua, which means supplication, which means blessings, which means the physical activities, beginning with takbir and ending with taslim. It has multiple meanings. So from Allah, as salah, mercy and blessings. From the angels, Dua asking Allah to bless and have mercy on the following person. And that's why he says he does the same for all the believers. And in Surah at tawbah Allah says, min amwalihim sadaqatan so Allah ordered the Prophet وسلم, upon taking the zakah from the believers to redistribute it, to do salah upon the payers of the zakah. How would he do the salah? Would he pray to them? No, do salah يعني, to invoke Allah to bless them. That is the meaning of salah. Very simple. Assalamu alaikum. Abdul Hamid from Manchester. Abdul Hamid, Salaam Alaikum. Salaam Alaikum, Sheikh. Wa Alaikum Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, how are you and your family? I hope all of you are doing well. We're all doing great, Alhamdulillah. Normally you say you're calling from the UK, so this time you're saying from Manchester. <laughs> yes. Would you think I would recognize you? <clears throat> I, would, I wouldn't think you're asking about marriage and divorce anymore. Oh my God, me Allah. Are you trying Allah to disguise? <laughs> me Allah, remember you for knowing me very well. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So any question about, uh, any question other than or apart from marriage and divorce, go ahead. <laughs> no, no question, to be honest. I just want to uh, state that. I just want to give salam to you and also to ask you uh, about Sheikh Hasim Halakim uh, and uh, Dr. Bilal Phillips and Dr. Zakir Naik. Are you hearing from all of these uh, wonderful, yeah. great teachers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in touch all the time. We're doing great. Alhamdulillah. We're surviving and we're fighting. Alhamdulillah. Wa Alhamdulillah. But I hope you didn't change your mind. I mean, if you have any questions, it's okay. Honestly, I didn't, I didn't even know. I, I have a lot of questions, but... It ran out of my mind as long as I'm able to speak to you just to hear a voice and right. you know know you're doing well. Alhamdulillah for that. Thank you, Abdul Hamid. Barakallah fiq. Salam to your family as well. Sister Asia from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Asia. Assalamu wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Sheikh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us to go and stay in Mecca and we were there for a few days. Wallahi, Sister Asya, I was about to ask you, were you lucky enough to perform Umrah? MashaAllah, you took the initiative. <laughs> uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, Sheikh, we did not get the permit because we have to ask, take the permit unless and until if we don't get that permit from uh, that app, Etamanna, and it is uh, already the people have booked. Yeah. So we, we tried our best, but uh, we cannot get, and we have the limited period 
of the time in the hotel. So Alhamdulillah, but uh, Subhanallah, I just remember you going for uh, Tahajud and Fajr and Alhamdulillah, we got all those Tahajud and Fajr and the Nishraq, Alhamdulillah, and Isha and Maghrib, Alhamdulillah, it was a nice time, Subhanallah, pray for all the Ummah and Muslim Ummah and make a lot of dua for Huda TV, entire Huda TV Thank and all so Sheikh and much. every staff. Thank you so much, Sister Asya. May Allah bless you and your family. That really means a lot for all of us. Thank you so much. So do you have any questions today other than the great news that you're sharing with us? Yes, I just want to ask somebody has some message that it is not allowed to uh, kill uh, ant and uh, uh, honeybee and the frog, the, the sound of the croaking of the Frog is the humming mm -hmm. for uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why we are not supposed to eat the frog. Uh, is this authentic? Yeah, so uh, because mashallah you've prayed for us and you made dua for us, I'm going to uh, uh, give the priority to answering your questions. These insects and the frog as well, uh, it is forbidden to kill them especially for the frog, the Prophet Sallallahu said, they make tasbih, so do not kill them. They're not harmful whatsoever. Uh, for the ants, only if it is necessary, but unnecessarily killing ants or honeybees, that is not permissible. Thank you, Sister Asya from the KSA. Uh, Bayan from Australia, Assalamu Alaikum, Bayan. Assalamu Alaikum, Sheikh. Go ahead, Bayan. Yeah, I have a question, uh, Sheikh, about the house, uh, like a mortgage thing. So we're struggling to because of rent here. It's very expensive. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I hear you. Continue, please. I hear you. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Is so my name is Bayan Sheikh, and I have a question about the house, like uh, Western country we're living so. It's very hard to rent and okay. So I, I will send a message better. I believe Bayan is asking about the mortgage. And whenever yes, you're calling, yes, yeah, I got your question. Whenever you're calling, so we're fully aware of the kind of life in the West, whether in North America, Latin America, or all over Europe, uh, or even Japan, China. Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed us to travel the world and actually live uh, in the West for quite a long time. So um, we'll answer the mortgage, inshallah, in the same order it was received. But now I mean from Bahrain asked about the have brother inheriting from him. The word have brother uh, could mean have brother because you both share the same father or you share the same mom. So if you're sharing the same father and there are brothers who are full brothers, so the half brother from the paternal side is blocked from the inheritance, doesn't have any share of the inheritance. You got it? Obviously the brothers, we got to make sure that there are no parents, no children, because if there are children, so they take the wealth of the person. And the parents, each one of them get one sixth of the uh, inheritance but no parents no children so the brothers of the person will share the inheritance now if they're all four brothers and sisters as we know but if there are full brothers and sisters and some who are half brothers and sisters so we tell them depending on paternal or maternal so for the maternal we'll set them aside right now the paternal have brother, in the case that there are brothers and sisters or full brothers and sisters, they block him. He doesn't have any share of the inheritance. But if he is a have brother, maternal, then his fard is one sixth of the inheritance. Before anyone will take anything, that is his share. One sixth of the inheritance. So I hope the answer is clear. Assalamu alaikum. Khadija from Malaysia. Assalamu alaikum, sister Khadija. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, how are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing fine. And you, Sister Khadija? Uh, 
Uh, yes, uh, Sheikh. Actually, I have a, a question. Um, that before I ask the question, actually, I have to tell you a little bit of details uh, of the incident. That is, a um, few years ago, one of my friends were having difficult with getting married, and so she asked to a guy for help. Uh. So that guy gave her two amulets: one to wear it, another one to um, like. Uh, to flush it off the toilet. Mm. So at that time, she didn't recognize that what uh, this person was asking her to do is related to sihir and kufr, and it's not at all accepted in Islam. Mm. Uh, later on, she uh, uh, understood like around like uh, how long she said, I uh, forgot, like around uh, eight months later, she understood that this is at all in Islam. So she, um, uh, repent and she took off the amulet from her neck and gave it back to the person. Now she wants to ask that is her repentance accepted and also she wants to ask like is it necessary for her to destroy the amulet like one that she gave back to the person or uh, is it necessary to repent? Is it necessary to or uh, nothing with it? Khadija? I got your so question. So that's what she wanted to yes. ask. Khadija, I got your question. And the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said in the hadith, Man alaqa faqad ashrak. Wearing an amulet, talisman, or ta'weez is an act of associating partners to Allah in worship, and it doesn't benefit, no protect against any harm. So if she didn't know, and once she knew, she took it off, threw it away, flushed it in the toilet, burned it, and she repented, Allah accepts the repentance. It is Allah who accepts the repentance. He is the oath for giving the most merciful, provided she is sincere in her repentance. And she needs to be vocal about it and warn others against doing such thing. Assalamu alaikum. Rayyan from the USA. Assalamu alaikum, ya Rayyan. Wa alaikum salam, Sheikh. How are you? I'm doing fine, alhamdulillah. Go ahead, Akhi. So, Sheikh, I had, um, uh, I think, two questions. The first one is, I read a hadith about the Prophet wasallam saying that he disowns any Muslim who settles among the mushrikeen. And as for someone like me, I mean, I mean, yeah. I live in the United States, which is a non-Muslim country. I just, I just wanted you to clarify that hadith, if, sure. if you can. Sure, 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 sure. And then my second question is, Sheikh, I am well aware that I have been dealing a lot with um, a lot of uh, wiswas because I tried to do one time. I tried to do uh, wusulin and I kept and I kept thinking to myself that I make the niya before I before I started, and then I was unsure if I got every single every every single spot until to the point where I just uh, I, I I quit and I was like, you know what? I'm just I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave. Should I redo the wusul? And uh, that, yeah, that was my second question. And I think that's all. Got your questions. Ryan, I would um, request you, brothers and sisters, to hold your calls. I cannot take any further calls. We have many questions, so let me try to tackle them before the end of the program. Rev. One from United Arab Emirates. Upon giving in a charity, does a person have to recite any supplication? What a person has to make certain of while giving in a charity? Two things. Number one, the money that I'm giving in a charity is earned lawfully because Allah doesn't accept an unlawful anything, charity, or even if you spend it on yourself. Any unlawful earning is not accepted. So even if it is given in charity. Number two, sincerity when you give it. So make sure that you don't want to please anyone other than the Almighty Allah when you give in a charity. After giving in a charity, and after or while uh, performing Hajj, after the prayers, after fasting, it is recommended to supplicate because the act which is considered a righteous act is one of the greatest means of approach. Ibrahim alayhi salam, upon finishing the Kaaba construction, said, Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'ul alim. So they began by asking Allah for qabul, acceptance. Then ask him for several other requests, which were all fulfilled, alhamdulillah. So you can ask Allah for qabul, you can ask Allah for forgiveness, you can ask Allah for blessings for you and your family and protection. Rahman, and I want you to change that name, by the way, 
even though it's not Ar-Rahman, but it's not permissible. Uh, so uh, the insurance, أخي, uh, whether you live, because I believe he's living in the UK or in Mecca, it's the same. It's by law to drive a car, you need insurance. If you have the choice to pay month by month, and it is the same, as long as you're not paying interest, that's your choice. You can afford to pay for the whole year, fine. You can afford only to pay monthly, that is fine. Provided that if you make the payment, like we say, for instance, the amount is 300 per year. But if you pay it on an installment, there is interest. 3%, 4%, 5%, that's not permissible. Two different packages. We have one package, fixed price. Monthly, you pay 50 bucks. That's halal. Once the interest is involved in the delay of the payment or deferring the payment, it's haram. And the basic insurance is permissible because I am required by the law to drive a vehicle. I have to have an insurance. What we do not do is the premium where we the, the full coverage. Okay? Uh, our respected sister from, uh, from Belgium. Muslims really should have their own cemetery. So that when somebody dies, they process the funeral as it should be from an Islamic perspective. In America, for instance, alhamdulillah, every community or many communities, they manage to purchase a lot and they turn it into a cemetery, a Muslim cemetery, and they do the process Islamically to the best of their ability. But in Islam, it is forbidden to fetch the body after it has been buried for any reason other than that there is a danger, like there is a flood or the, the, the deceased body, the corpse, is flushed out, so to be buried in a better place, but to be taken out and to be burned or discarded, that is not permissible. So the alternative, whether to ship the body to a Muslim country, if it is affordable, if you have the means, or to purchase you guys your own uh, uh, lot in order to turn it into a cemetery, should be given a lot of consideration. Uh, um, Looking for any further questions? MashaAllah. Yeah, yeah. One question, which is the hunting of an animal for food to eat. If a non-Muslim who's Christian is joining you in the hunting. Look, in the Quran, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, the Almighty Allah said in the two consecutive ayahs, ayah number four and ayah number five. يَسْأَلُونَكَ مَاذَا أُحِلَّ لَهُمْ So, O oh Muhammad, they ask you what is lawful for them to eat. Obviously, the question is not concerning um, vegetables, carrots, fruits, grapes, or apples. It's question, the question is concerning meat. So Allah the Almighty says, قُلْ أُحِلَّ لَكُمُ الطَّيِّبَاتُ وَمَا عَلَّمْتُمْ مِنَ الْجَوَارِحِ مُكَلِّبِينَ And he added, and whatever you train of the animals for hunting, الجوارح, the animals which normally hunt, uh, include the mukallibin, whether dogs or eagles or any animal which is normally used, provided it is been trained for hunting. And how do you know it is trained? So when it hunts the game, it doesn't taste it. It doesn't take a bite out of it. It captures it and it leaves it there. If it eats, then it is not mukallab, not muallam, and you're not allowed to eat such meat. Before you send your dog and before you shoot your uh, arrow out of the bow, before you pull the trigger, you say, Bismillah. What about the kitabi, a Christian or a Jewish person who is joining me in the hunting, and he hunted a game? It's permissible to eat from their hunt, from the game, provided they didn't mention other name other than the name of Allah. Even if they didn't say, Bismillah, they don't believe in your ilah anyway. But if a person is learning and said, in the name of Jesus, sorry, you're not going to eat it. A Muslim is learning said in the name of Abdul Qadir al-Jilani, you're not allowed to eat it because Allah the Almighty says that you're not allowed وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا مِمَّا لَمْ يُذْكَرِ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَإِنَّهُ لَفِسْقِ So it is rebellious, you're not allowed to eat such meat. It's similar to the dead. Rayyan from the USA said that the hadith 
In Arabic it says, Ana bari'un mimman yuqimu bayna dhahrani al The Prophet sallallahu said, I will disown those who live among non-Muslims. For a person to take the text and interpret it as, as it appears, that is not fair. Because when you examine the life of the companions, most of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu didn't live and die in Medina. They traveled. They spread the deen. So, Akhi, if you're living in any country and you're, pra- you're able to practice your religious duties freely, you're able to pray, you're able to fast, your wife is able to wear hijab, you're able to eat halal food, like the Jews have the kosher, you guys have halal, real halal, not the fake halal, you know? A lot of Muslims, unfortunately, they buy the food from regular stores and they put the halal logo. I'm talking about halal food. Then live and intend to give da'wah. So there are excuses or concessions which makes it lawful for a Muslim to live among non-Muslims. Giving da'wah, seeking treatment, learning some useful knowledge which is not available, and obviously skipping persecution, which is very common and very widespread in, unfortunately, our Muslim countries. So a lot of people don't have any other choice. If they return to any Muslim country, they will be thrown in prison. They don't have a choice, Rayyan. We do not generalize. But you, Rayyan, a young man, and you feel persecuted, you feel oppressed, you cannot even offer your prayer, uh, you cannot find a halal job, halal earning, take a hike. Go to another place where you can actually practice your deen. My dear brothers and sisters, every year Muslims commemorate the event of the Hijra. What is the Hijra? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where did he migrate from? Did he migrate from France? Did he migrate from Holland? Did he migrate from Texas? He migrated from Mecca. Um al Qura, the dearest and the most beloved city to Allah and to the Prophet's heart, his place of birth. The, the Qibla, it has the house of Allah, the first Qibla, Al Kaaba. But it was Darul Kufr because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions were not able to practice Islam freely. Go, make hijrah, where you can actually practice the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم until next time. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Allah is my heart's speech Your mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance And in your deen allow me to advance Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Allah is my heart's speech Mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance And in your deen allow me to advance